Welcome to this devotional study entitled Spotlight Beatitudes. We're going to be taking a close look at Matthew chapter 5 verses 1 through 12. And this is a very famous passage of scripture. It is the beginning to what is known as Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, which is comprised of Matthew chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7. I like to call the Sermon on the Mount the greatest sermon ever. And therefore, I like to call these Beatitudes, Jesus' Sermon Introduction, the greatest sermon introduction ever. Now, as we listen to these famous verses, I know that it will be familiar, it will be easy to gloss over them, but I invite you to listen to them again for the first time and come with expectation and anticipation. You're at a different place than you were the last time that you considered these verses, and therefore the Word of God can speak to you afresh and anew right where you are. So be excited about taking a devotional tour through the Sermon on the Mount. And if you're not that familiar with these Beatitudes at the start of the Sermon on the Mount, then you are in for a real treat that will help you to grow in your faith in Jesus Christ. So let's begin by reading the passage, Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. I'll be reading to you from the English Standard Version. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on a mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice, be glad, for your reward in heaven is great. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you." Now, every sermon and every sermon introduction has at least four parts to it. The first part has to do with the first component is the speaker. And of course, in this case, it is Jesus. Secondly, we should think of the setting, and this would be Jesus up on the mountainside, probably on the northern side of the Sea of Galilee, and it is somewhere between 27 and 30 AD in Jesus' public ministry years. After that, we have to consider our next element, which is the subject matter. What is Jesus' subject matter throughout the Sermon on the Mount? And indeed, he introduces it here in the Beatitudes, the subject matter is the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, as he calls it here in Gospels, the Gospel of Matthew, sometimes also seen as the kingdom of God elsewhere. And then finally, we have to consider who the audience is, who's listening in, who's receiving this sermon in this setting from this person. And that's where we want to focus in our first devotional, there actually are two different sets of people mentioned by Matthew who comprise the audience. The first is known as the crowd. We'll attend to them in this particular devotional. Jesus sees the crowd. And I think that's noteworthy that Jesus is well aware of the crowds of people who've been gathering around to listen to his teaching and to seek him out. Now, why have people in the crowd come? Well, we don't know exactly, but we can well imagine. Some are coming because they might have spiritual curiosity. Jesus has been preaching that the kingdom of heaven is at hand among people, therefore they are to repent and turn from their sins. Some have uh, physical ailments and need healing. Jesus, as it says in Matthew 4, has been healing the sick and delivering those who are demonized. And no doubt there were those in the crowd who came in pursuit of Jesus for his help. 
There may have been other people who just came because they saw a crowd, they heard the buzz, they wanted to know what was going on. And finally, maybe we could speculate that, that still some others said, hey, we hear that Jesus, the prophet, he's here, he's in our area, he's here near the Sea of Galilee, let's go listen to what he has to say. Somebody invited them to come and hear Jesus, and so they went. Now, all those in the crowd have two things in common. The first thing is that they're part of the crowd, which means that they have not yet made a commitment to Jesus as a disciple. They are not yet his followers. They're part of that great mass of people that are interested or curious or want something from Jesus, but they are not Christ followers. However, they also have in common that they are willing to listen to Jesus. They are there in the crowd. When Jesus sits down and opens his mouth to speak, they are listening to Jesus. They have this willingness to hear what Jesus Christ might have to say that will influence and impact their lives. So not yet followers of Christ, but curious about Christ. And Jesus saw who these people were, and he was well aware of them as he delivered the Beatitudes and the Sermon on the Mount. I think Jesus is calling us to be aware of these people too. First of all, there may be somebody who's listening to this devotional who still is in the crowd. Does that describe you? You're curious about Jesus, you're willing to listen to Jesus, but you haven't made a decision about Christ. You haven't said yes to Jesus, but you haven't said no to Jesus. Well, this devotional series might encourage you to reach a decision, and we hope it'll be a decision for Christ. Others of us have made that decision for Christ, and we are Christ followers. I want to encourage us today to remember back to when we were part of a crowd. Can you remember those days? Never let go of what it was to be someone in the crowd. And to remember what it was about Jesus that made you respond favorably to him when he called your name and when you heard his teaching. When you encountered him, go back and claim again what it was that transferred and transformed you from a crowd member to a Christ follower. And then finally, I would encourage us in this devotional that we also, like Jesus, see people who are in the crowd. We understand that those people need to get to Jesus to hear what he has to say. I encourage us to be among those who say, hey, Jesus can still be encountered today. He still can be heard today. Come with me, let me take you to Jesus. Are you curious? Would you like to hear what Jesus can do for your life? Then come along with me. I'd like to introduce you to him through the Beatitudes and through the Sermon on the Mount. So let us care about people in the crowd, see people in the crowd, and reach out to these people who are yet to come to Jesus so that they might become Christ followers as well. So take time to reread and to think about what we have heard in this first devotional, reflect upon it, and then, of course, respond as God leads you. That's our devotional for today on the Beatitudes, Spotlight Beatitudes, the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and we'll talk to you next time.